Okay, so we're going to get started with this stop motion animation project by, and you can join along with me. Uh, your choice could be just, just watch and absorb, or if you're on your computer and want to open up a new tab and work with me, you can do that too. But we'll just open a new tab and start a new Google slide project. So my favorite way to start any new blank Google thing is to just type the tool. Um, so this would be slides.new in your address bar, slides.new. And you press enter, and it will just automatically start a new slide deck in your, um, in your drive. Works for students, too. Um, of course, the first thing we want to do is we always want to title it something. Um, so maybe we call it stop motion movie or whatever the project is that you're doing, you could title it that. And then the setup process is you can close your themes. That opens automatically. You don't need that. I also recommend to students to collapse the speaker notes and the film strip for now so that we have our blank slate. And then we're going to delete the text boxes that are here automatically. So we'll just click and hit backspace or delete. And now the first step is going to be to create the background of the scene. So we want to think about a place, a picture that we can get that represents a place that has both a foreground and a background. Because so, if we put anything in it, uh, we want there to be movement, right? So we want to have a foreground and a background. So if we click on our toolbar here, the word background, and then click choose image, we can either upload a picture we already have. So if you wanted to upload um, something the kids have made in another app or um, a picture they've taken on their own, they can totally do that. Or you can click Google images here and we can search for something that um, is free of any copyright restriction. So it's totally safe to use. Um, so we could do a park. Let me search for a park. Uh, and then I always add the word background at the end so that it gives me kind of pictures that are plain. Um, so I kind of like this one uh, that has like a sidewalk on it so it, I can put something on it. So I'll choose this one and then click insert. And then I can click done here. And now I have a picture in the background of my slide deck. Let me know if you have any questions in the chat and I'll be happy to go back over something. Cool. Okay. All right. So now that we have our background, the next step is going to be to add the things into our stop motion animation picture that are going to move. So maybe it's a picture, this is a park. Um, I'm just making something up, right? But if you're doing something related to your content area, it might be very specific, right, for whatever you're doing. Um, so for this, I'm just going to think about something that could be at a park. Um, so up here, you have an insert image menu right here in your toolbar. I'm gonna click that and again, um, you can upload from your computer if you have images of things you already want to add. So either from your computer or from your drive, you could take a picture directly with your computer camera. The students could take a picture of themselves and put them into um, the, the animation, which could be cool. But for now, I'm just going to say search the web. Again, this is searching Google Images, so you don't have any issues about copyright. Um, so I'm just going to search for a uh, dog walking PNG transparent, all the things to try and get a picture that has um, no background to it. And it might take a couple times to find that. Um, but let's see. Let's see if this one. Nope. <laughs> we just got to keep searching. One of these is going to be transparent. I just know it. And it's not that one. Yay, I found one. <laughs> That's the same process your students are going to have to figure out too, right? They could use a website like uh, remove.bg. Um, 
it's totally free. You never have to actually sign in. Uh, but basically what you do is you just uh, take a screenshot or something from your computer, you drag it in here and you can remove the background of any image. And then you can re-download that and it'll be um, transparent background. So that's a tip that you could teach your students how to use. I did have third graders using remove BG. Um, with second grade, it was a bit of a stretch just to download pictures. So we tried to stick with just using images inside of um, slides. And to be honest, the second graders didn't really care if they weren't transparent. They just loved the project in and of itself. <laughs> it didn't have to be perfect. <laughs> OK, so now that I have my first thing, um, and I'm going to just kind of move it around on my slide until it's kind of where I want it to be. And I want to think about, you know, bringing in that art piece of maybe this is like a steam kind of project. We want to make sure that uh, the 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 proportions of this make sense, right? So thinking about the size of the trees in the background, does the size of the girl and the dog make sense? I think she needs to be a little bit smaller. So we can just um, hover over those corner, those blue corners and kind of resize her and maybe push her back a little bit so that their shadows are on the sidewalk. And I'm sorry, I have to go let my dog out because he's being a little jerk. Hold on one second, sorry. I think we can all relate to what just happened. <laughs> okay, um, so I have him resized my little guy in there, or my girl and her doggy. Um, maybe I wanna add other things to this picture, maybe not. I'm gonna leave this here as good for now. Now it comes to the actual creating the movement piece. So over here on the left side of my Google slide, I'm gonna show my film strip, and that's just gonna allow me to show all of the slides that are um, in my project. What we do now is we come to our film strip and click on that slide that we just created, and we're gonna duplicate it, okay? So you could control copy, control paste. It's a lot quicker to just do one thing, so I, I duplicate it. You could right click, duplicate slide, or control D on your keyboard. What I teach kids is to duplicate the slide twice. And then on the second one is where they actually start to create movement. Um, and we make small movements. That'll add up over time to create that, you know, in incremental movement of this girl. So I'm assuming this dog is pulling her. It looks like she's running, right? So I'm gonna move her one little bit. I clicked on her and I used my arrow key on my keyboard to advance her one spot. Then I'm gonna come back to my film strip, make sure I click on that slide in the film strip, otherwise you're gonna duplicate your girl. <laughs> uh, control D, and then I move her again, and I repeat that process, moving her little by little, over and over again. This is the part that takes the most amount of time. The students will get a hang of it. And maybe uh, throughout your movie, maybe the background is going to change, right? Maybe they um, are running so fast, right, that she just like speeds up and I need to have like flames shooting out of her, right? That's a very kid thing to do. Um, so maybe I insert uh, flames, transparent. Perfect, let's see. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna show you what this looks like as a kid because they would not care that this doesn't have transparent background. And for the purpose of our training today, it doesn't really matter either. Um, but maybe she's on fire, right? Like her shoes are on fire. She's running so fast, right? Hopefully you guys are laughing at my silliness here. She keeps moving. The flames are coming with her, right? <laughs> you 
y'all get the idea. Maybe another character pops into your scene. Maybe something starts falling from the sky, <laughs> depending on uh, whatever your story is about, right? Or whatever the project is that you're doing. I always say to go for 30 slides before you look at it um, because you're going to notice um, that that's really when the movement kind of happens. And when we put it into um, publish to the web mode, the longer it is, the longer your video is gonna be, right? So maybe she she had her her level up and now she's gone back to just being a normal girl who doesn't have flames shooting out of her, oops, her feet. Okay. I'm gonna cheat just a little bit to get him off the edge. And um, I always tell my students it's okay if they go off the edge because remember your your film is going to be you know the edges, but if they're leaving the screen, right? If they're leaving in your movie, then it would make sense that they go off the edge in your slides too. And that'll show that like they're actually moving in the video. So the first thing we can do is look at this in present mode and just click through it quickly. And that can be how we kind of test it. So I'm gonna scroll back up to my very first slide and then I'm gonna put this into slideshow mode. And now with my arrow keys or my space bar, I can just flip through my slides and see that that motion is happening uh, as I'm clicking through and I can see if I'm happy with what's going on with my movie. And as you can see, that was really fast. I can even put her in backwards, right? <laughs> the kids really like making them go backwards. Then I can click escape when I'm done. I can go back, make any edits. Maybe I didn't like the big jumps that happened or maybe I want more characters in my story or I missed something, right? So that slideshow mode is your way to check. When I'm ready to turn this into a published product, right? I'm done with my movie. I love it. It's the best thing ever. And I want to share it. I want to turn it into my teacher um, or I'm ready to share it with other people. We're going to go up here to file. Share and then publish to the web. Okay, so file, share, publish to the web. Under your link settings, I change it to be for every second. This is the auto advance timing. So it's going to, uh, you would decide how fast your movie goes, right? The slower the slides advance, the slower the movie is. The faster they are, the more it actually looks like it's an animation. I always recommend clicking uh, both of these next boxes. So the first one starts the slideshow as soon as you open the link, right? As soon as it loads, it will start to play your slides. And the next one actually loops the content. So it will restart the slideshow for uh, when it gets to the last slide, it will automatically go back to the beginning and restart again. So I check both of those boxes. Down here in your published content and settings, there is a way to restrict access. Uh, let me zoom out just a second. So by default, your published to the web settings will be uh, um, available to anyone who has the same share settings as your file. Um, but once you publish it, it can be for anyone. So students could share this project with their families. If you need them to restrict access to APS, you can do that. They would check this box right here. But if you don't want that, then no worries. But that, that setting is there just in case. Okay, so when we're ready to publish, we're gonna go ahead and click that yellow button, publish. And then a pop-up window is going to say, are you sure? You say, okay. 
and it doesn't seem like anything has happened, but it did create a link for you. You can copy that link, open up a new tab, paste that in the address bar and press enter. And now because we have it set to move every one second, your movie will start to play with uh, the action that's happening for your uh, story, right? And so as you're watching that published to the web link, you can say, I actually want this to go a lot faster than maybe you make each, the jump that happens, right? The movement that happens between each slide um, a little bit better or um, a little bit more. But as we get to the end, we can see that that dog is kind of heading off and then it got to the end and it restarted at the beginning. It's just like a big loop. It's almost like your students are creating a GIF using Google Slides as well because it'll just keep looping over and over again. GIF, GIF, whichever you call it. Now, this link is going to stay live even if I make edits. So if I go back and I'm like, that wasn't exactly what I wanted and I make changes, that link will still be available. So even if a student turns it in, they could go back and make edits, right? If they turn in that publish the web link to you um, and they make changes, it'll update automatically for you on that publish to the web link. That is the, the quick <laughs> overview of how to do uh, stop motion animation in Google Slides. I'm gonna stop the recording here so that we can have uh, a little more Q&A time.